Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to In Zor Education. Um, today I would like to talk about uh, one specific um, effect of, uh, of the light, which is called reflection. Well, we all know about what reflection actually is. Everybody saw um, the reflection in the mirror. Um, but it's quite interesting, actually, um, to know about certain principles which are behind this particular um, effect of, of the light. Um, and there are some interesting details, um, even historical details, which I'm going to share. Um, this lecture is part of the course um, presented on physics, uh, presented on unizone.com, uh, and uh, the course is called Physics for Teens. Uh, on the same website, unizor.com, there is a prerequisite course called Math for Teens, um, and uh, whatever information is in that course is uh, mandatory for um, studying physics for teens. Um, there is a lot of math in physics, basically, that, that's my main point. Um, now, the site is completely free, there are no um, uh, advertisements, uh, no financial strings, you don't even have to sign in if you don't want to um, work with the course um, in some kind of supervisory mode. Um, so, I do encourage you to use the website um, to watch these lectures of this course, because every lecture has very detailed notes right near it on the website. And uh, basically the notes are like a textbook. So you have both. You have the visual lecture and you have the textbook with ba basically the same information. Okay, back to reflection. Um, now, I would like to just talk about two distinct effects. One is called reflection, another is called refraction. So, reflection um, and refraction occur when the light is um, propagating um, somewhere near the boundary between two different media, different environments. Let's say the air and the glass or vacuum and you know, water, whatever. Now, the boundary between these two substances is very important. Reflection means, so if you have uh, one particular medium, boundary and another medium, so reflection is when the light comes to the border, it goes back to the old medium it came from. That's a reflection. Reflection. Now, refraction means that it's actually penetrating the border. This is a refraction. Now, in many cases, these both um, effects are occurring at the same time, which means partially light is reflected and partially it penetrates through the border. But we're not talking about this mixed case. Our purpose for this particular lecture is reflection only. Another lecture will be about refraction. Okay. Right. So that's basically as far as terminology is, con is concerned. So reflection goes back into the medium it came from. Refraction means it penetrates right, like a, through a lens. Whenever the light goes through the lens and goes further, that's a refraction. But the mirror is reflection. Okay. Now, um, in many cases, there are certain laws of uh, reflection, like the incidence the angle of incidence is equal to angle of uh, reflection. Many people know about this, but uh, I, I'm not talking about this at this particular moment. I would like to actually understand why it happens. Why the angle of um, uh, one angle is, is, is equal to another. So basically whenever you have a situation like this, if this is a mirror, the light goes this way, this is a perpendicular, 
So these two um, angles are actually uh, equal to each other. This is called, if this is the direction, so this is called incidence, and this is reflection. So these angles are equal. But I don't want to give it to you just like this, basically, just like a fact. Okay, just take it or leave it. That's, that's the law of the nature, or something like this. I would like to find some well, reasonable foundation behind this. And um, uh, I was thinking about this, and uh, I came up with a certain explanation, which happened to be basically invented by famous um, French mathematician uh, Pierre Fermat um, in uh, 1662, if I'm not mistaken, so in 17th century. So it's known as um, uh, Fermat, Fermat's principle of the least time. Here is um, uh, the, the brief explanation of this. Now, we all know that the light goes along the straight line in the uniform environment. So, if this is the source of light, and this is the observer, um, that observer sees the light which goes along the straight line. These rays of light are not visible by this particular um, observer. I mean, I assume that this observer is basically a point directed only in, th in this particular direction. So, if you see the light, light goes along the straight line. Well, straight line, as we know, is the shortest distance, right? So, um, I suggest that whenever we are talking about the mirror, well, actually it's not me who suggested it, that's Pierre Fermat in 1662 suggested, suggested this. But the suggestion is that if this is the light, and this is, let's say, observer, now there is a wall here, so observer doesn't really see direct light. Observer can see only the reflected light. So, the principle of least time is that this trajectory, which basically depends on where exactly the point of reflection is located, this trajectory is minimal as far as its length and therefore its time, because this is the same medium um, since this is a reflection, the light is always within the same uniform medium, let's say vacuum. So the speed is the same, so um, minimizing the time actually is minimizing the distance with a constant speed, right? So again, my um, statement is that this particular trajectory is shorter than any other, let's say this one. So that's a very important principle which we are going to, to, to prove, obviously. Uh, we're going to prove that this is shorter. But the principle, I think, we can take intuitively as an axiom. So again, the light goes along a trajectory uh, which minimizes the time of travel. By the way, historically speaking, um, I, I read a little bit about this. When Pierre Fermat suggested this principle, it was met with some kind of a resistance because it kind of assumed that the nature has certain intelligence, so to speak, and it chooses among all different trajectories, it chooses the one which minimizes the time, time of travel. Well, it's a philosophical kind of discussion, which I'm not going to go into right now, but it's an interesting thought, actually. In any case, the principle represents certain logic behind why the laws of reflection are such and such, and by the way, refraction as well. So, um, and it seems to me, at least, that to accept this principle of um, minimizing the time is actually, as an axiom, it's, it's easier than 
to say basically that the angle of incidence uh, is equal to uh, uh, angle of uh, reflection as an axiom. I mean, the axiom about the principle of minimizing time seems to be reasonable to accept as an axiom rather than uh, the equality of these angles, which natural question is why. Why we go this way instead of that way? So, if we are using, if we are accepting the principle of minimizing the time, then we can prove that this is exactly the right trajectory. And now here is the proof, very easy one basically. Um, let's just consider a purely geometrical problem. Um, you have a plane. Now let me just convert this into a plane instead of a line. So this is the plane. And you have two points on the same side um, of the plane. And we have to find such a point on the plane. Let's call it alpha. So this is a source of light. This is our um, observer. This is a point, this is a point. And we have to find the point on the plane alpha such that the distance, so this is let's say r, so the distance sr plus ra is minimum among all other points. Here is how we can do it. So let's forget about this trajectory for a while. We will use it later on. So we have to find this point. So here is a construction, basically, of this point. So um, I will really construct the point. I will give you a way how we can get this point very easily. Let's uh, drop the perpendicular to the plane and move it further. So this is, let's say, B and this is A prime. So A prime and A are symmetrical relative to the plane alpha, which means this is the perpendicular and AB is equal to BA prime. Now AB is perpendicular to alpha. That's a symmetrical point, all right? Now, if I will draw a line from S through the plane towards A, and this R is where they intersect the line and the plane. I will get some point R. Now, this is a straight line, SA, SA prime, straight line. So the line um, intersects the plane at point R, and I am actually stating that this particular point R is the one um, where the light should go um, uh, towards the plane, reflect to the point A and the distance SR plus RA would be minimum in this particular case among all other points R. How can we do it? Again, very easily. Choose any other point. Call it X. Now, obviously, Since A and A prime are symmetrical, um, XB belongs to the alpha. So these are two um, right angles. So the triangles are actually equal. AXB and A prime XB are equal to each other because AB is equal to A prime B. This is common and this is right triangle. So there is an angle which means AX is equal to uh, XA prime. Now, if I will add this 
what will I have? Now, Sx plus Xa is equal to Sx plus Xa prime, right? Because Xa is equal to Xa prime, Xa and X prime. So Sx plus Xa is equal to Sx plus X. Now this is, now S R A prime is a straight line. S X A prime is not a straight line. It's two different, it, it's two segments. Now sum of two segments, S X plus X A prime, is definitely greater than the straight line S A prime. So that's why any other point is not good because S R A prime is smaller. Very easy proof. Okay? It's a straight line and this is a broken line. Okay, so we have actually constructed the point R which gives us the minimum length of SR plus um, RA. Now minimum length means means minimum time because the speed is constant. Now let me now um, uh, give you some properties of this particular construction. So let me get rid of, of this x and everything related to x. And I will leave only b and r. Now, so let's draw perpendicular here and let's connect this to this and let's uh, this perpendicular, let's say it's S prime, let's connect this to this. And I need another thing uh, perpendicular from R, R prime. So, R, R prime is perpendicular to alpha. R, R prime is perpendicular to alpha. S, S prime is perpendicular to alpha. Now, um, A, B is also perpendicular, or A, A prime is perpendicular to alpha. So these are all perpendiculars. Well, if these are all perpendiculars, it means they're all parallel to each other, right? Okay. Now, let's consider the plane beta, the plane of how the uh, light ray is actually traveling. It's SR and RA. So this is the plane. It's, it's, it's basically vertical. S, R, and A. We are actually drawing the plane which goes through these three points. Now, what else belongs to these three points? Let's just think about it. Well, um, now, the S and R belong to this plane, because that's how we have designed. SR belongs to the plane, and RA belongs to the plane. Now, since SR belongs to the plane, point A prime also belongs to the plane, because it's in the same line, right? Two points belong to the plane beta, so the A, uh, so all the, uh, the points on this uh, plane. So A um, prime uh, belongs to uh, beta. Okay. Now, since A prime belongs to the beta, and A belongs to the beta, because again beta uh, contains the whole RA, it means that the whole A, A prime belongs to the beta. A, A prime belongs to the beta. And B as well. Point B. So S, A, B, A prime, R, this is all one plane. Now, it's S belongs to this plane. Now, A, B is the line within the plane, beta. S, S prime is parallel, right? Because both are perpendicular to alpha. S belongs. So let me just draw it again from this. If you have one line, 
and a point. So this is AB. And this point is um, S. Now, if this is parallel to this, this line belongs to the plane, this one is on the plane, and it's parallel to this. Obviously, this SS prime also belongs to the plane. So SS prime also belongs to the beta. Absolutely the same thing with RR prime. Because R belongs to the plane, and RR prime, prime is parallel to AB, AB belongs to the plane, so RR prime should belong to the plane. So this is all plain um, geometrical properties uh, of the lines, points, and planes. And by the way, all these topics are definitely presented in Mass 14's course, which is prerequisite for this. So now what we have, this line, this line, this line, these two lines, this line, all belongs to the same plane beta, which actually goes like this. Okay. <coughs> so, now we basically uh, are, are ready to, to do something with angles. Look, this is the line. Now, let's consider only the plane beta, with vertical plane. Now, within this line, S a prime is a line and S prime B is a line and these are vertical angles, correct? So they are equal to each other. Now, the triangle ABR and A prime BR are uh, equal or congruent as we uh, call it right now well because these catheters are equal to each other AB and BA prime, this is a um, common side and obviously these are right angles so the angles so the triangles are equal so these angles are equal so we have all three angles are equal okay now s prime uh, uh, b um, is uh, a straight line basically um, now uh, why is it uh, a straight line um because these are two perpendiculars and uh, uh yes and these angles are equal right so if these two angles are equal now these two are complementary because this is 90 degree this is perpendicular so these two with two arcs are complementary to a single arc angles so they're equal as well and these are exactly the angles which um, the laws of um, a reflec reflection actually is talking about this is an incident uh, incidence angle and this is a reflection angle these are angles with the perpendicular to the plane of uh, reflex re reflection okay so what else I think these are all properties which I wanted to talk about, and now let's talk about the laws of um, reflection. So, we have the first law is that um, I have already stated that that the um, I I incident ray, uh, reflected ray, and the perpendicular to a point of reflection, they all belong to the same plane, and this is the plane. Uh, beta which we were talking about. So that's the first law of reflection. Both rays, incident and reflection, and perpendicular to the plane at uh, a reflecting plane at the point of reflection, it's called normal actually. This is called normal. RR, RR prime is a normal to a plane at point R. So these all belong to the same plane. So we have already discussed that. Now, the second um, law of reflection, that the angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. Again, we have already addressed that. We derived all these from the main principle we started from uh, in the very beginning, the principle of the least time. Okay, so we've got that. And the third one is uh -huh, that 
within this plane, um, which beta plane, S and A, the source and the um, recipient of the light, are on different side from the normal, from R R prime. Again, that's how we basically constructed the whole thing, because we have this line and this point is the intersection, it's in between these, so that's why we have this property. So all these laws of uh, reflection, uh, three laws of reflection, that uh, two rays and normal are in the same plane, that angles are equal incidence and, and reflection, and uh, both uh, points are on different sides of the normal. Now, these were actually derived using this principle of the least time. And I think it's, it's easier to accept principle of the least time rather than just, you know, okay, these are properties of reflection, memorize it, okay? I would rather prefer to derive it from something more fundamental, like principle of the least time. Okay, so this is kind of purely mathematical um, approach to reflection using this principle of um, the least time. Um, I would like to also add to this certain physical um, confirmation, so to speak, uh, of these uh, principles. And the physical confirmation is uh, basically quite easy. And let me just talk about this now. So let's assume that we have this um, plane, and plane would be um, this would be x, um, this would be y and this would be z axis, okay? So we have introduced the frame of reference. So the mirror, the plane of reflecting, is xy plane uh, in this system of coordinates, and uh, uh, z would be at the point of um, reflection, basically. The, it, um, the origin of coordinates will be the point of reflection. So we are observing this particular process. Light is emitted um, uh, from some point and uh, let me just turn the whole thing in such a way that initial position um, of the light is within zy um, uh, sorry, within no, not this y, zx, zx, zx. So zx, this is a this is the plane where my initial uh, source of light actually is. All right. So the s has certain coordinates at time is equal to zero. Uh, our ray, well, we are talking about particles, so it's kind of a corpuscular theory is using um, this type of thing. So, at point time is equal to zero, S uh, has coordinates um, certain x, which is um, negative, some negative x zero, where x zero is greater than y is zero, and z0, these are coordinates, so mm, this would be minus x0, and this would be z0. This is coordinates of the source of light. At the moment, uh, time is equal to zero. Uh, it issues um, the particle of light. Particle of light goes towards this particular point, okay? Now, um, because that's how we have chosen it, right? We have chosen a system of coordinates in such a way that the light behaves this particular way. It goes along the straight line, which means it's always within um, x, z plane, this one. 
its y coordinates is zero, and uh, there is certain speed the travel, uh, the light travels, the particle of light, if you wish, is traveling. Well, the speed is c. So if the distance, for instance, from s to zero is something, let's say d, then the time would be uh, d divided by c, distance divided by speed, and that would be the time when it will reach point uh, of reflection. Okay, fine. Now, the speed is constant. Now, let's assume that this angle is theta i. i means incidence, so it's theta i incidence. Now, if the speed is c, linear speed is c, then the um, x component would be c times sine of theta i. Now, y component is not changing because it's always within x, y, z. So y coordinate is not changing. So if this is a vector of speed, it would have this, 0 as the y, speed within the y um, coordinate. And the z coordinate, it goes um, down, so it's diminishing. Um, now, that would be c times cosine, but with a minus sign, right? C cosine theta i. Now, this is a speed at minus because it goes down along the z. So it goes towards positive direction of the x, but negative direction towards i. So that would be the speed. Okay. Now, <coughs> now let's assume that it hits the surface of the um, xy plane, which is supposed to do reflection. Well, reflection can be, from the corpuscular theory, reflection can be viewed as um, basically elastic um, um, uh, heat. So, the, um, let's assume it's ideal elastic heat um, and uh, it means that uh, this elasticity will affect every um, coordinate separately. Now, the y coordinate is zero, so there is no change in the y direction. Now, the plane xy, if it's elastic, the force of elasticity goes straight up. Now, the x component again, um, has, has no effect because the uh, force goes up. So it's only the z component which will be affected. So the z component, which goes straight down, it will, um, it will uh, feel this um, uh, elasticity of the surface. And uh, if it's ideal, then uh, considering we have to preserve the certain laws of momentum and energy, the conservation, etc. So the z component will just change the direction to the opposite. It's like you drop the uh, some some kind of a, a metal ball on a very springy kind of a surface. It goes uh, again vertically up to the same height if we would like to preserve certain uh, laws of uh, conservation of energy. So that happens exactly the same way. So x component will not be affected y component will not be affected, but z component will be affected. So, this trajectory is the result of this elastic uh, heat. And if this is, uh, so this is a vector of incidence now. So, vector of reaction, uh, reflection, sorry, would have no effect on Um, sorry, R. No effect on uh, the uh, x speed, no effect on the y because it's zero always, and the z component will change to opposite. 
so it was minus c uh, cosine uh, um, theta i, it will be plus c. So that would be calculated speed. Now, what is the speed if this angle is theta r, the reflection angle? Well, the speed is the same, absolute linear speed is the same, it's c. So again, the x component would be x component would be c times sine. So from another perspective, the same vector should have c sine qr, also zero as y component, and uh, c cosine r. It goes to the positive direction now, right? So that's why it's plus here. So we have the same vector. One is basically calculated based on this angle, and another calculated based on elasticity of the mirror. Elasticity m in this particular uh, case means that if we are shooting the particles of light, they are just elastically reflected. So these are two the same thing. So we have the sine of i uh, of uh, theta i is equal to sine of uh, theta r. This is theta i and this is theta r, incidence and reflecting. And the cosine also is supposed to be equal. So if sine of the ang angle is equal to cos, to sine of one angle is equal to sine another angle, and cosine is equal to another cosine, angles are the same. <coughs> Again, plain trigonometry. And that proves this second law of reflection. Now, the first law of reflection is basically, we have already satisfied it, because in the very beginning we have chosen the xz plane as the plane of action, so obviously the, um, the uh, z-axis and, and s, uh, this is zero, or origin of coordinate, and, uh, and the reflected light, they all belong to this xz um, plane, so the first law that rays uh, of incidence uh, of reflection and the normal are in the same um, uh, plane. So that's an xz plane. And uh, the third one, that these two are on opposite side, well, it's basically because this is a negative x and this is a positive x. Um, that's why they're on both on different sides, you see? Ne negative x in the beginning, and then uh, after that it was a positive, because the uh, speed is positive. From, from point zero, it goes to the positive x. So they are on opposite sides. So this is the third one. Again, I'm not saying that this is like very mathematically correct proof of anything. No. Uh, everything I, I spoke about today is, um, I would say, explanation of something which we observe and an attempt to give a, some kind of a logical foundation behind it. Foundation either um, uh, well, kind of mathematical uh, from the position of uh, minimizing the time of traveling and more uh, physical uh, explanation based on corpuscular theory of, of light and elasticity of the reflection mechanism. Well, I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. So you go to unisor.com, Physics for Teens course, um, this is the part which is called waves, and among waves you will see the reflection. Um, uh, I think it's properties of light and then reflection. All right, that's it. Thank you very much, and good luck. <laughs>